everyone welcome back to my channel so this video is so important and highly requested I'm gonna show you guys in this video how to increase your chances of matching and how to apply for the match and the factors that matter to program directors I'm gonna show you guys whether being an IMG um, increases your chances in certain specialties and decreases your chances in others the number of publications that actually matters and the rank order list and how to maximize it to your favor so you can make sure your match to your preferred specialty finally i'm going to show you guys the calendar so you can save all the dates of uh, the nrmp and a checklist in the end so that you can make sure you don't miss any step so let's get started okay guys so the most important factor before anything else is the rank order list i'm telling you this before your step one score before everything the rank order list is very important here uh, usually you're gonna rank the programs according to your preference uh, and usually sh they should be of one or two specialties uh, no more so let's say you are applicant A and you prefer program county. So this is your number one preferred program. And then your second best will be memorial, third will be city, four will be mercy. These are just examples I got from the NRMP website. So this is your preferred order. So you would, uh, this is your top choice and this is your fourth choice or whatever at the same time the programs you interviewed in will rank you as well as your being their most preferred or least preferred applicant so mercy for example let's say this is a hospital it ranked you as its most preferred applicant so what the program the what the match program does uh, which is the r3 system is that it will uh, follow the algorithm of matching you uh, tentatively with the uh, program that you prefer. So let's say um, you put uh, the, you ranked Mercy as your fourth choice, and none of these programs preferred you. So the match system will uh, actually allocate you to Mercy because Mercy has ranked you. Okay, I'm going to show you a better example of that. So let's say we have like five applicants here and each of them ranked their preferred programs. And those programs, because they interviewed those people, also ranked and excluded some of them. So let's say the program City. It can only take two positions and it ranked the uh, applicants in order of most preferred to least preferred. And the applicants also ranked city as their most preferred or least preferred. So let's say city actually only has two positions and it will prefer Darius the most and then Arthur and then Sunny, then Latha, then Joseph. So let's see, Darius also ranked city as its number one choice. And so the program will match Darius to city. Now, Arthur also ranked City, so the program will match Arthur to City because it's the second preferred. Now, Sunny also wants City, but it can't, the program can't match Sunny here because City only has two positions and they were already filled by better applicants. So, Sunny can't match our, at her most preferred program. So the program will go down to her second most preferred program, which is Mercy. But unfortunately, Mercy doesn't prefer Sunny. It doesn't have her in their preferred list, which means Sunny was excluded after interviewing. And that's Sunny didn't match. So the key here, guys, the, the lesson to be learned from this example is to put as many rank order lists as you can if you only put two um, you're decreasing your chances of matching like Sunny did 
And so the more programs you put, the higher the chance that you get matched at anyone and uh, assuming they're of your preferred specialty, right? No, the number two lesson that should be learned here is you want to be the preferred applicant. And if you want to be the preferred applicant, it's better to have good USMLE scores, step one or step two CK nowadays will uh, count more. And so those are the most important factors. Now, the factors that matter, that actually matter in the match application and whether being an IMG can lower your chances or increase your chances in certain specialties which are IMG friendly and which are not. So this is the interactive charting outcomes of 2020 and he's showing you here for everyone, IMG or USMD, those were the average uh, percent of applicants matched in anesthesiology in relation to step one score. You can see here that the higher the step one score, the higher the chance of matching. And here is showing you the number of applicants that actually applied to anesthesiology. And you can see that they're not too high. Less than 2,000 people actually apply to anesthesiology. Now, what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to filter by applicant type. I'm going to choose IMGs only. So non-US IMG and US IMG. And I'm going to see which specialties are IMG friendly as they call it so for example with anesthesiology here you can see that so little like there's so few people actually applied for anesthesiology IMGs uh, so most uh, applicants to anesthesiology were USMDs and the average acceptance was about 60% uh, for average U.S. scores, and the higher the U.S. score, uh, the USMLE score, the higher the chance of matching above 65%. So it's not bad. Now let's, for example, take a look at internal medicine. Wow. You can see here, guys, that you got so many applicants, IMGs, applied to internal medicine, right? And... Most of them had a USMLE score of 230 to 239. The average acceptance is also high. Most of these uh, dots are above the 60%. So you can see here that the higher your USMLE step one score, the higher the chances of matching. All right, now the most important factor will be the number of specialties, uh, the number of contiguous ranks. That's what I told you about, guys, that the more ranks you add to the rank order list, the more programs you apply to, the higher your chances. Let's say I apply to only two programs, like Sunny did. Here, the average acceptance is 35%, very low, compared to someone who put three to five ranks that goes all the way up to 60 some percent let's say someone put apply to five to ten programs wow over 80 percent let's say someone applied to 21 programs 21 to 25 it's 100 percent or more you can see here that the, the more programs you apply to, the higher your chances of ranking so that you are you guarantee matching into your preferred specialty if you have more than 25 programs or more than 20 programs. That's the importance of applying to many ranks. So this, as you can see, guys, is the most important factor, followed by your step scores because you can see here that th above 230, is you know should your goal should be to go above 230 or even above 240 as an IMG now let's say number of specialties ranked let's say you want internal medicine and you also want pediatrics so you apply to 10 programs here 10 programs there in fact 
specialties uh, number of specialties is inversely proportionate to your um, chance of matching people want you to be focused so it's better to apply to 20 programs of internal medicine alone than to apply to 10 programs internal medicine 10 programs pediatrics that's two specialties so let's see those who got only one specialty ranked and as many programs as they want this is their average acceptance let's see someone who put three specialties for instance they had a lower chance let's see someone who put five or more specialties they had a much lower chance it means this person is not focused so it's better to rank one or two maximum the number of work experiences guys doesn't matter I checked it before let's see the number of volunteer experiences um, no volunteer experience at all let's see if you haven't done anything okay so this is the average acceptance around 50% let's say you did one or two volunteer experiences this increases your chance but still low let's say you did three to five it increases your chance more so you can see here that volunteer experience matters, but it's not the most important factor. Now, what about the number of publications? Let's see if this actually matters. If I choose no publication, an applicant who hasn't participated in any research, you can see that the average acceptance here is, is about 50%. Compared to if he had at least one publication one two one or two which is less than three let's see it's almost the same now what about if he had three to five the average increased a little this shows us guys that the number of publications doesn't really matter a lot it doesn't change the curve much or maybe it varies by specialty now what about the uh, number of research experiences and so being published doesn't really matter as much as participating in a research itself so let's say you had no research experience whatsoever whether or not you were published the average acceptance is almost the same uh, for the overall. Let's say you had one or two research experiences. Uh, this increases a little bit. Let's say you had three to five research experiences, almost the same. You can see here, guys, that you don't really have to bog yourself down with um, research and stuff like that. I'm going to show you guys the actual steps, the matching process, so you can be organized. So the first thing, you go to the NRMP website and you register, as I'm going to show you now. After you register for NRMP uh, and choose and then go to ERAS and apply for the programs, you're going to be interviewed. Some of these programs may choose to interview, the, to interview you and some may not. Now, after you get interviewed, they will rank you according to the rank order list, whether they prefer you or not. And you're also going to rank the programs that you're interviewed in according to your preference. Now, you can't rank a program that didn't interview you. This is just doesn't work. So programs and applicants will rank each other and submit the rank order list on the system. And then the NRMP will run the matching algorithm and match you according to your ranks tentatively, as I've shown you guys earlier. And finally, the match results will be released in March. And then even if you haven't matched, there is the SOAP option um, for unmatched applicants. You, so you can add all dates to your calendar it's a very nice option that i did and it will remind you at every important date of the deadline so uh, registration for the match starts in september 15 it opens at 12 p.m eastern time and it ends by january 31 so you have this entire period to register for nrp and eras and then the ranking you can you will be interviewing in programs throughout this time and you're gonna do uh, the ranking 
which starts in February the 1st. By this time, you would have already uh, known which programs you preferred after you've interviewed. And the rank order list uh, has to be certified. You have to submit it by no later than March 2nd, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And match week is in uh, March. Even if you did a match, there is the SOAP option, which also has a deadline and certain rounds. So you can save all these dates to your calendar.